See what it says. In the following questions, you have to find out which of the following statements are redundant for determining the answer or can be dispensed with. Now, what does it mean? This means uh, useless or strictly speaking, not useful. Right? What is not useful in finding out the answer is the question here. The most common uh, common mistake right, which, which students commit here is that they, they don't read this direction carefully. Usually, this, this looks like data sufficient, right? There is a question followed by three statements. Usual case is where we have to find out which of the statements are required. But what most students end up doing is, you know, they, they don't read the directions properly. And they find out the statements that are required. Which is exactly opposite to what is asked in the question, right? The question says find what is not required. So it's very, very important that in such questions, data sufficiency, syllogisms, coded inequalities, read the directions, right? Are they asking us to find out what is required or what is not required? Are they asking us to find out what are definite conclusions or what are not the conclusions? What follows or what does not follow? Okay. Now, here's the question. It says an amount of rupees 1500 is distributed among ABC who are wage earners. What amount does B get? So, 1500 rupees is being distributed among A, B and C. A, B and C. How much does B get is the question here. Now, how do you divide wages among persons? Wages among persons, it is divided based on the capacity. Basically, it is divided based on the amount of work done. Amount of work done by each person. Like for example, let's say if each person has finished equal amount of work, the total work is one unit. Total work always is one unit. So if each one of them has that done one third, then they'll get 500, 500, 500. If A has done half of one unit, A will get half of 1500, 750. And B and C will get depending on how much they have done there. So basically, the amount has to be dis divided based on the ratio of the work done. Out of one unit of work, how much has, what fraction has each person done? Accordingly, you divide it. So, let's let's first find out which statements are required to get the fractions of the work done. Then we will look at what is useless, what is redundant. First statement, A is twice more efficient than C. A is twice more efficient than C. Meaning what? If C can do the work in X days, if C can do it in X days, A will do it in X by 2 days. Remember, A is twice efficient. So, if a person is twice efficient, the number of days required is half. Yes or no? If C can do it in 10 days, A will not take 20 days. Don't get confused. F efficiency is twice. A is efficiency is twice. Meaning, time required by A will be half. Yes or no? Time required by A will be half. So, if C can do it in X days, A can do it in X by 2 days. That's the understanding. But anyway, that statement alone will not give us the answer. If C can finish the work in X days, A will finish the work in X by 2 days. How will we decide how much is the division of 1500 among a b and c not not possible look at the next statement a and b works for 10 days which is twice the number of days for which c works a and b works for 10 days which is twice the number of days for which c works a and b works for 10 days which is twice the number of days for c which c works now from this statement what do you understand from this statement the understanding is that a work for 10 days b work for 10 days and C work for 5 days. Yes or no? Simple statement. A and B works for 10 days. Which is twice the number of days for which C works. Now, is statement number 2 enough to get the answer? Well, some of you may say yes. Because we know the number of days for which A has worked. The number of days for which B has worked. And also the number of days for which C has worked. But understand guys, here we only know about the number of days for which they have worked. It could be that the capacities are different. Just knowing the number of days will not help. We should also know the capacity of each of these persons, right? You cannot say that because the days ratio is like 2 is to 2 is to 1, we will divide 1500 in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1. It will be incorrect. It may be incorrect. Because, see, 2 is to 2 is to 1 will be the ratio for division of 1500 rupees if they have got equal capacities. But is it mentioned anywhere that they have got equal capacities? They can be of different capacities also. First of all, don't remember what is given in statement number 1. You are not supposed to remember what is in statement number 1. Only look at statement number 2 independently. From 2, we know the number of days for which they have worked. But amount of work done is what? Remember, what is the work equation? Work is equal to the number of days for which a person works into the capacity of the person. That's what will give you the work, right? Men into days. Remember, work is what? Number of men into number of days. So, A into number of days for which A works. B into number of days for which B works. C into number of days for which C works. A, B, C is nothing but the capacities of A, B, C. A, B and C there indicates the capacities of A, B and C. Right? Mendes. That's, that's what the idea, right? Work is 
work is proportional to men into days. Usually we say men into days or it can be person into days. So men here indicates the capacity of the man. A is capacity into number of days for which A works. B is capacity into number of days for which B works. C is capacity into number of days for which C works. Anyway, the point is 2 alone does not give us the answer because it only tells us the number of days for which they have worked. We have no clue about their capacities. Point number 3. If C can do a work in 2 days, then B can do it in 3 days. If C can do a work in 2 days, then B can do it in 3 days. What does 3 indicate here? What does point number 3 indicate here? Point number 3 indicates the relationship in the capacities of A and B, uh, C and B. Meaning what? Let's assume the work is W. Some work is to be done which is W. C can do it in 2 days. Meaning work done is C into 2. Number of days is 2 into C. C's capacity. Which is equal to B into 3. So 2C is equal to 3B. That's what we get to know from Statement number 3. Meaning, indirectly it gives us the relationship between the capacities of A and uh, B and C. It gives us the relation. Like statement number 1 gives us the capacities of A and C, right? Relationship between the capacities of A and C. Efficiencies of A and C. Statement 3 gives us the relationship between the efficiencies of B and C. Is this alone enough? No, not enough to get the answer. Because it only tells us the efficiency ratio. Like here, the ratio of C and A is uh, 1 is to 1 by 2. Here, the ratio of C and B will be... Uh, you know 3 is to 2 yeah? so 3 alone also does not give the answer now for us to find out the answer what should we know for us to find out the answer we should know how much work has each person done we should know the work done by A yes or no we should know the work done by B and we should know the work done by C the actual requirement is what how much time does B take? I mean, how much money does B take? Out of 1500, how much will B get? So for that, we should know how much how much work has B done. How much work has B done? Yeah, how much work has B done? Now, how can you find that out? Let's, let's try. Now, since independent statements have failed to get the answer. See, one alone does not give us the answer. Two alone does not give us the answer. Three alone also does not give us the answer. Now, let's go for combination. If you go for the combination, if you go for the combination, what do you get? If I, let's say, combine two and three. By combining 2 and 3, what will we get? By combining 2 and 3, will we get something? No. Yes or no? These values are respectively A's capacity into 10, B's capacity into 10, C's capacity into 5. See, I'm getting this 10, 10, 5 from statement number 2. So, statement 2 is definitely required. Can I do away with statement number 2? No. Statement number 2 is definitely required. Now, for me to find out the capacity of A, B and C, I will need statement 3 and I will need statement 1 as well. Because 1 gives me the relationship between C and A. 3 gives me the relationship between C and B. Only if I combine all these 3, I get the relationship between A, B and C. Are able to follow? Statement 1 gives us the ratio of A's capacity to C's capacity. Statement 3 gives us the ratio of C's capacity to B's capacity. We have discussed in the topic of ratio and proportion. We have discussed in the topic of ratio and proportion that when you know the two ratios, only then you can combine them to get the ratio of the three persons. So for us to find out A is to B is to C, A is to B is to C, we should know all the data. I mean, we should know statement number 1. We should also know, I mean, we, should, we will need statement 1 and statement 3. Yes or no? We need statement 1. And we also need statement 3. So that we can get the capacity relationship. And I am not interested in solving the problem. Remember, this is a question from data sufficiency. We only have to find out which of the data is required or which of the data is not required. So don't waste your time in solving the whole question now. Don't try to get the ratio of their capacities. The point you need to understand is, number 2 is definitely required. Statement number 2 is definitely required because it gives us the number of days for each person. 1 and 3 are also required because only by using 1 and 3, I will be able to get their capacity ratio. So capacity ratio is obtained from 1 and 3, days are obtained from number 2, meaning 1, 2, 3, all are required. All the three statements are required so that we can find out the amount that B gets. So can I say, is there any statement which is redundant here? No. He's asking us to find out which statements are redundant. If he says, which statements are required, then all are required. Which statements are required, then all are required. Is there any statement that is redundant? No. There's nothing which is redundant. Can we do away with anything? No, right? Can we do away with anything? No. Why is that none of the options satisfy? He says only 3 is redundant. No, 3 is not redundant. 3 is required. 2 is also required. 2 is not redundant. 2 is definitely required. Either 2 or 3? No. 
Any two of them are redundant? No, definitely not. Only one is redundant. Is one redundant? Can I find out the answer using two and three? Can we find out the answer using two and three? See, three is not. We know that two is not redundant. Two definitely is required. Statement two. So option two and option three are eliminated. He is saying any two of them are redundant. We have already checked that. Any one statement cannot give us the answer. If any one statement can give us the answer, then we can say any two of them are redundant. So this is also eliminated. Three also is not redundant because that talks about C's capacity and B's capacity. Answer in my view should be none is redundant. Option four says only one is redundant. Why? How can I get using two and three? No, I think all the options are wrong. Four also is wrong. The answer to this question is none is redundant. None, none is redundant because to find out the ratio, both one and three are required. To find out the ratio, both one and three are required. So none of the statements is redundant. All the three statements are required.